Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we are going to, to do a full disk encryption install of OpenBSD. So the first thing you want to do is just boot from any USB or CD that you, you know, you've put OpenBSD on. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pause this real quick, but I'll be back with you in one second. Alright, so the first thing we want to do here is type S for shell. And because this is a RAM disk that we install from, it doesn't have enough device nodes to be able to do what we have to. So we're going to go to slash dev, and then we're going to say and, and in addition to that, we're going to run sh make dev. We need to create a device node for our hard drive to be able to use the other commands later. Um, very important, in this case, I'm using a SATA hard drive. So I use SD0, but if you're using an IDE hard drive, use WD0, okay? So let's use SD0. And now that we've made the device node to interact with, we need to zero out the disk. This is because any used, any free or used space can be figured out forensically if we don't zero out the disk or, you know, by any attacker. So we're going to zero out what we just made and you want to use RSD0C with byte size 1M. Um, again, how SD is for SATA, if you have IDE, put RWD0C for the entire IDE disk. We're using the entire SATA disk here. Now we're going to hit enter on this, and it should overwrite all of the drive. Now if this is a big drive, it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here. Um, this is only a 2 gig drive, but yours is going to take quite a bit longer than this. But don't skip this part. Now that we've done that, we do want to create an, an MBR or a GPT partition table on the device. So we want to do fdisk dash i and y, so those two switches and sd0 again if we have SATA or wd0 if we have IDE. There's another important point about this. If you are using UEFI, the Unified Extensible Frame Firmware Interface, so you don't you have a newer computer, you have to put on there dash G and then dash P960. And that creates the needed firmware for the installation, the, the needed way to install that. Um, I do not have this here, so we are just going to go with a normal MBR, and again, um, if you have UEFI, do those uh, dash G and dash B960, but add WD0 at the end, which you're not going to see UEFI usually on a system that uses that anyway, so you're good. So just use this, and you that's what you want to see. Now we're going to do disk label um, dash E, capital E. And one second. So we want to do SD0. And again, substitute that here if you want. Now we want to make a partition. So we want to say A. We want to say partition A to add. The offset starts at 64. And then you want to put a asterisk, a, a star in here. So it uses the rest of the space. Instead of a normal 4.2 BSD file system, we want to use RAID as its type. And then we want to say the entire disk is, you know, one partition of RAID for now. And then we're going to write. Now we're going to quit. So that's the, the first uh, part of this. And the next part, we're going to start to actually create the encrypted volume on here. In order, in order now to use the encrypted drive to, to encrypt it, we need to use by b i o c t l dash c capital C dash l, and then we want to use 
that partition we just made on the disk. So SD0A, and you need to have soft RAID 0 at the end. Now, if you were to use IDE, you just would substitute it like this. This is how the command would look. But this is how we have it going on here. Enter a very strong passphrase. I suggest at least 16 characters. And you do want a lot of um, variety with lower and upper cases. Do make sure um, they match, though. Now, pay very special attention. It just made a new virtual drive. So this is SD1. So the rest of the operations on the install will be on SD1, but that's like an abstraction of whatever our physical drive is, whether that's IDE or SATA. All right? So it's like an overlay drive. But we do have to do operations on that, so we have to make another device node in the same way. So sh make dev um, sd1. And now we want to zero out the beginning of that drive. So we want to zero out dev sda. The entirety of that, the, the drive here, the, the first part of it at least, like that. So at this point, we've made our, our encrypted volume on top of our existing disk. Now we want to go through the installation process. And this is a normal uh, installation as far as the, the networking and, and everything else. But what this does really is encrypts the data as it's going, as it's being requested by applications um, and being read and um, wrote to the disk. Um, that just encrypts the, the data transparently. So it's still a normal file system, but it's encrypted when it's being uh, put on there. So that is the, the advantage. So if you were to boot up another device, you, you wouldn't be able to see the encrypted the, the data. It would still be an encrypted disk. Speaking of encrypted disks, though, once we get to the disk setup, hit the question mark because you don't want to get mixed up here. Otherwise, you'll have to redo what we just did. <clears throat> you want to use SD1, which is the OpenBSD software RAID crypto device. And you want to say SD1. And inside of this device, we create everything as normal, like a normal installation without encryption. Um, it just creates everything as normal, except it is encrypted transparently. Now, for the sets, you can use HTTP if you want to verify the signatures. Uh, we're not going to here. We're just going to use CD0. You can install all the sets or as little as you want. Say done there. And we want to say yes. Um, and hit enter here. And that will start to install. I will see you in a second. All right, now that those are installed, we're just going to say done there. Set the time and let it uh, do its last few configuration steps. And um, the, the goal here that you know it's successful is if from here, once this is done, if when it reboots and uh, after the post and it starts to start up OpenBSD, before you get to the bootloader, you're going to get to a subset of the bootloader that asks you for the password. And at this point, that entire, all those partitions on our encrypted volume are inaccessible, even if you boot up off other media and bypass what's ever on the disk itself. So that's the awesome thing about this. And the reason why we had to overwrite, because it's a lot harder to detect if anything's on the drive at all and things of that nature. So from here, I'm going to let this finish and I will be uh, right back and we'll type that our uh, password in and I'll show you that it boots up. All right, now we're going to go ahead and reboot. And do make sure when you reboot this, you take your install media out of the drive. And um, I'll see you in a second. All right, so now we've rebooted after creating our encrypted volume. And as you see, it's asking us for a passphrase. We cannot boot the kernel and the rest of the user land and everything because it's encrypted. So we need the, the symmetric 
passphrase, our pre-shared key, to be able to encrypt and decrypt all the data on the drive. You know, um, technically it is encrypted with AES-XTS if you do want to research the method it uses, um, in case you were wondering. So we're going to type the wrong password on purpose, first of all. Incorrect passphrase. Incorrect passphrase. We've got to type the right one. Now, um, once we type the right one and hit enter, it'll just start to boot up. Now, this is virtualized. It's very, very slow to boot up. It probably will not. Um, it does go to the bootloader after that. This is where you, if you're doing kernel stuff and a different kernel, you could choose it there. But then it will start to boot everything up. You'll log in as normal. You can install and manage everything as you would. This can apply to a desktop system as well as a server or firewall system. It does not matter. You can even use a key disk where you put this equivalent of this passphrase data on a USB stick and you have to plug that stick in to get the decryption to the to get it to accept the passphrase. Then it just stores that to use it to encrypt and decrypt the data. But yeah, after you put it in though, it does store it in memory and then of course what you're working on is in plain text. Another thing you have to be sure of, if you're sending data on the drive over the network, make sure you use encryption, like HTTPS or VPN or um, SSH, because it it's, would be a weak link in the chain if you kept everything encrypted at rest and also the stuff you're not using on the drive, but when you send it over the network, um, it, is the, in, it is plain text. So you need uh, the, the encryption at multiple layers to have the desired effect. But yes, if the computer is off, the drive is, is fully encrypted. So with all that, I'm Tyler with T-Tech. I hope you found this useful, and thank you for viewing, and have a very nice day.